I am so happy to be here today and thank you so much for joining us as we celebrate the 30th anniversary day. It's hard to believe that it's already 30 years since the late Catherine O'Neill, Susan Alberti, who is here today, Susan Forbes Martin, who was ill, and I founded the Women's Commission for Refugee Women and Children. They are going to show some films later, and that young girl you see up there, that used to be me. I'm now 80. <laughs> So many women, and some men as well, has given achievements that no one believed could be possible to make us what we are today. Thank you all that have been part of this. But I believe that we can only celebrate when there are no more wars or acts of persecution that create this flow of human beings to an uncharted future. You know, when your home is the least safe place in the world, when the deep stormy ocean and you cannot swim seems to be the safest road towards mercy in a small boat, or while crossing the borders to seek refuge only to meet hostility or hate or death by another human being. Our work has become more urgent. When the Women's Commission was founded, the number of refugees and displaced people stood at about 18 million. Today, it exceeds 68 million men, women, and children. But I do not know what the numbers had been today without organizations like ours. I started my journey exactly 40 years ago in 1979 when I visited the Thai-Cambodian border as part of a delegation with the International Rescue Committee. There I had my first awakening to the brutality of displacement. And since then, my mind has been full of images that was never part of my world before. Little ones, old ones, too weak to walk the last steps to a food distribution center. Human beings lying on the ground in silence because the saddest cry has no sound. Our neighbors on this earth living on soil where you cannot put down roots, living with a loss that will never be replaced. An old woman crying, and I bowed down to hold her. And then, being held, she stopped crying. And this sound I will remember always. She cried, she was held, <gasps> and she made that sound like my own baby did when I took hold of her. And she smelled like my grandmother. I recognize the familiarity of that. It's binding me and us all together as human beings. There are no the others. I came to know then that we might be among the last travelers for humanity. In a world, watch TV every day where there is so little time left, where there is no longer a place for dreams, where the final act of aggression might be telling us that we, the witnesses, are no longer 
needed. On that first travel 40 years ago, trying to cross the border to Cambodia with doctors and food, we were denied entry. We were warned by gunshots not to come closer to the border. And we stood there and called that we had no weapons, we had doctors and medicines. And Bayard Rustin, who once walked with Martin Luther King, went as close as he could with the rifles aimed at him and sang, we shall overcome. And my travels with IRC continued. And after 10 years, it was not difficult to see that women and children needed an organization of their own, where the sidestepping of war was also rape and violence and neglect of the most vulnerable little ones, those that cannot live if they don't have a hand to hold on to. And that's when some of us went to Hong Kong because we wanted to see a refugee camp and see what was done and what the laws were. And the laws for refugees in the public refugee camps were written by men and for men. And one thing that really made us sure that we had to do something was the laws in a refugee camp, UN refugee camp, was that if you were pregnant, you had to go to the jail two hours away, taken there, and make the birth of your child there, and you would each get the number, and if you were lucky, you would get the child back again. And while we were there, we heard of the woman who started to give birth more than two months before. And what they did, because this is what the law said, they took her, they bound her legs, and sent her to the hospital two hours away. And of course, the child never made it. And we, the women, we spoke about this at the press conference at the airport of Hong Kong, and we were told to leave immediately, Hong Kong. I have never been so proud in my life to be thrown out of a country. <laughs> These laws have now changed. They were written by men, and they were written for men no more. Yes, that is why Women's Refugee Commission was formed and why it is still so desperately needed. We are all needed, every single one of us, to remind ourselves who we are and why we are. Compassion is easier to carry than hate. If I'm not for myself, who will be for me? But if I'm only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? The investment we make today is an investment in a future for all of us, all of us who strive and dream about a fair and a just world. Thank you for being here.